Hi, hello, it's uh, Richard again. We're in the next part of my conversion of this Rover to fully electric power. <coughs> Been quite busy since my last video. Uh, you may recall <coughs> had an issue with the gearbox not working properly, so I was only turning this passenger side wheel and not the driver side one. I uh, managed to get out of another gearbox um, last weekend and I put it into the car, which now seems to be working okay. So I've got the other one to look at when I uh, get the opportunity. Sorry about the wind noise today, but I thought I'd push the car outside to give you a bit of a clearer view of uh, what's been going on or what I've managed to achieve. Right, we've got the engine um, bolted in position, or sorry, engine motor, should I say, um, bolted in position. I've managed to fit a, a mount here, which is a bit agricultural at the moment. I'm going to be doing a rough build initially to get everything up and running and fixed in the place and then cleaning things up later on. A um, bit of a trouble trying to get this to stay square, this end of the motor, being it's so weighty. The original idea of using the mount off of the location there didn't work because the motor is so heavy at the um, driver's side, driver side, so I've had to make two mounts up. The other one is a bit hard to see, but around the back of this pump there's actually a mount that comes from here on a rubber mount I've made and down onto the bottom mounting plate for the motor. So I've got one plate that comes up here, one at the front, stabiliser bar down the bottom as the original, and the driver's side, uh, passenger side mount here. This is the mount I've made up here. Uh, basically, cut two pieces of 3 mil plate up, drill through both, put um, nuts behind this plate that's now on the chassis, and obviously look, uh, drilled it all at once so that um, the bolts go through here, catch on the nuts at the back, cut the chassis out, welded the inner plate to the chassis, and obviously the outer plate bolts onto it. And then I've just constructed a um, a webbed support for this rubber mount. It's an old Ford Granada Cortina mount. As you can see, I've had to pack these out with washers at the moment because I realised um, last night that my motor this end wasn't high enough because I couldn't select. Uh, reverse properly over here so I had to literally raise up the motor and put some washers in so I'll probably have to re redo this slightly higher up. Obviously that's the reason why I'm doing a rough build at the moment because obviously I'm going to encounter things along the way so there's no sense in um, painting things up and, get, and finishing it all off during this build because you might have to change things halfway along so everything's just rough at the moment and it'll all be stripped down, painted, trimmed up, the bird and whatever. Uh, this is obviously the other side of the mount. Um, so that now holds the motor pretty good. If I uh, touch these two leads together, I've just rigged up a power pack today. <coughs> battery that I've had previously has been loaned to somebody else. So hopefully, with it in neutral, as it is in a moment, if I touch this on here, we should see some movement. It actually sounds better with this gearbox than it did with the other one. But obviously I've now got the additional mount on here. Let's move this out of the way in a minute. What you can see, this is the alternator idea I've got. Uh, for now I've just used a piece of bungee on here, so I can take it off nice and easily. An old Ford alternator on the side here. Hopefully I'm going to get enough power out of there to charge my normal battery, which will go back over here on the original battery box, hopefully. And that's just located on that pulley that I described to you before. You can just see what you see in there is actually a part of the original spur gear that drove the uh, pump that this motor came out of and obviously there's the coupling in there that goes in the motor anyway so that seems to spin nice and freely not too much vibration at all which i'm quite happy with i did actually try to do a bit of a um a powered test one earlier just by uh throwing out the carriage but due to the fact that i was on the motor i was a bit of sparking on some of the terminals, so I decided not to try and do that when I did the video. Well, what I've also got sorted out now is my MR2 power steering pump is here, and I've utilised crouch down here. I've utilised this engine mounting bracket that I've made up to mount the power steering pump on one bolt, one in, one the other, and the stabiliser bar because there was quite a bit of movement on this whole thing before and now it's just sort of flexing on the movement of the steel so just that um, stabiliser bar to the cross beam seems to sort of things out 
Um, just had a drop by an adapter for this on here, just to join the original uh, Rover pipe onto the power steering onto this pump. Uh, and obviously, so far, just got a little bit of hose, quite a long piece of hose around here that just feeds in the low pressure side from the original Rover power steering reservoir. Uh, that does seem to take quite a bit of a, a current when I first turn it on. I think these two smaller wires here are probably a response from the steering wheel on the MR2, so that depending on how fast you're going, uh, depends how much, how fast the pump needs to run. So the moment it runs quite, it does run quite fast, obviously it helps about steering. Um, but I may decide to have a switch on the dashboard so you can just turn the power steering on when you want to uh, obviously turn it out of parking areas, otherwise having it running all the time may not do the pump a lot of good and obviously we'll drain the battery down. One of the other things I've also progressed on is, as you can see, my vacuum chamber is presently seated on this box I've created. I just lift this box up, this top up. What I've done is just made a small box here. That's the 16 gauge. Filled up with foam, and as you can see, the uh, vacuum pump is sitting in there. The original wires are still sticking out the back. Um, the idea being that this is a bit of a dead space anyway. It's not going to use nothing else, so hey, why not use it? for the vacuum system. Um, what I've obviously got to do is to come off of here, round to the vacuum chamber, other side of here, round onto here, which is the inlet into the vacuum, or servo system, should I say, for the brakes. Um, the one thing I did get a bit stuck on is two of the vacuum switches that I got, to hopefully turn the pump on and off, weren't exactly what I thought they were. So I'm going to rethink that at the moment. So what I'm uh, planning to do at the moment, just popping around to the back, is I've got here the cruise control vacuum cylinder off of my uh, Scorpio. I've uh, had to replace the engine in the Scorpio last weekend, which is one of the reasons why I wasn't doing too much on this. Um, basically, when you suck on that pipe there, it pulls that in like that. So I'm hoping to wire the switch up to here. So Obviously, when you're down like that, you don't need the pump running, and as the vacuum disappears with the use of the brakes, it'll let the chamber come out, operate a switch, run the pump again. So that's the idea. I've just got to try and sort of the right sort of switch. I have got one, but it, um, not really what I want, so I'm going to have to sort of have a bit of a play around with that. That's probably my next little project to do. Um, regarding uh, batteries, it's one of the other things to think about. <clears throat> Looking at some charging batteries, 12 volts at the moment. Still not sure if I'm going to go for um, 70 volts, which is what this motor is rated at, or 90, which is what all the control gear that I'll be using is rated at. Um, so I'm hoping to get in the original battery back in here, at least one battery in here. The charging battery is about 12 inches long. The one that I've been mucking around with so far is only about 11 inches long, but about the same width. So I'm hoping to get at least one in there, at least one down here and possibly one over the top um so and possibly one on top of the motor so i hope to get four in here and hopefully even the space on this side for the control gear um also i've got the accelerator pedal to play around with soon that's obviously the cable off of it hoping that's going to be sort of reasonably lie somewhere near the control box to act on the pop box which is something i've obviously got to um look into at the moment uh, the other thing I've managed to secure as well, whilst looking around for battery chargers, as I said last time, is whilst looking around eBay, I come across these little beauties, which are obviously a brand spanking new chargers from RAC. Um, Cape going up to 12 amps, and I believe, um, obviously, the quicker I get the charge done, the quicker I should better get me a recharge and back on the road again. Obviously, I don't want to charge too quickly and do the batteries in. So I've managed to get out of eight of these. I've got these for £15 each, uh, which is considerably cheaper than you can buy them on the sort of normal um, shops and online supermarkets at the moment. Got them off of eBay, uh, got a reasonable deal on the delivery being up but wait at once. So the whole lot for eight chargers came out to just over £140, which I thought was reasonably good. And obviously hoping to put all these slot in the boot with up to uh, number of three or four batteries. So I might be looking at either six batteries or eight batteries depending on what voltage I'm using. Um, quite a lot of this shape 
So as you imagine, this is wasted space. You've got a control panel here, and obviously the bit at the bottom. So I might consider taking this lot out, saving a bit more space for the boot, um, and obviously getting rid of some of the weight off the plastic as well. So they're waiting to go. Um, what I was going to do, say, a test run earlier on, but what I'm going to do is get some proper cable made up that I can put onto the motor terminal so I can do a little bit of a test run up and down here. Um, that's it for now. Hopefully, I'm going to be getting a bit more work. I'm going to get the vacuum seen and done today if I can and muck around with the vacuum chamber to see if I can um, get switched right up. Um, hope to see you soon. Bye for now.